Hesting, hesting good. Ladies and gentlemen, today is September 28, 2016, and this is the Kane Kill Show, episode 311, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Ken Lafferty, and I would like to welcome you to another show. Today, I'm going to be teaching you about a little secret, right? A little design secret. Nobody knows about this, and if you're curious, I'm going to go ahead and tease you. I'm going to tease you with what we're drawing today. Look at this. Look at this old granny, okay? I'm gonna be teaching you how to design the most amazing granny sweeping up the kitchen, you know, after she just finished making dinner for her grandkids. And we're gonna be talking about that, and that is all that I'm going to show you for right now. But it is my secret of design, and it's gonna be really, really fun, so I'm excited to show you guys that. But before we get into today's tutorial, we gotta take a stroll down a very special place, and that is, of course, the lovely lane. So journey with me to tinyurl.com slash kankalefanart and then be greeted by this very mysterious link called see all. Click that and then be dazzled by the amazing art that has been submitted by you guys out there. By the way, thank you so much to everyone who has submitted this week. And if you have not yet come out of your shells, then please, oh, like that one by the way. Please like the page, submit your art, and then you could get featured on next week's show. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get into today's show, today's tutorial. And I know you're just on the edges of your seats right now because what are we gonna, what are we gonna be doing with this granny? Well, what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna be teaching you guys a little bit about symmetry, okay? So what does that actually mean, right? Well, we're gonna take that granny, right? So it's a little bit of like a timeline down here that I, that I created for you guys. So we're gonna flip that granny Basically, we're going to t draw something. It doesn't really matter what it is. Then you're gonna flip it. And then you are going to, let me go ahead and show you what's happening here. So see how this is actually two grannies, right? But I put them together in such a way that the lines begin to intersect, right? And then you look closely and you're like, oh, I can see like another face in there. Oh, down here I can see like some other interesting like motifs, interesting designs. And maybe we can build something off of that. In this case, I'm literally doing the entire thing. I'm, I'm using the granny to create this eventually, right? But we need to know how we actually get there. We need to learn how we actually get there. So let's go ahead and do it step by step. Okay, so we take one granny, draw one granny, flip the granny, two grannies. Now we look inside of that, right? Now you can see me starting to pull out, pull out uh, general shapes and a general idea of what we want. But notice how the lines are kind of already there, right? Like especially around like the headpiece and uh, what this eventually turns into. And see how I like take this flow and like turn that into like a sword and then it's like the belts that kind of like hold the the armor in place. And then what happens is we just continue refining and refining and then at the end we have a completed design. And then look at that. We got all these cool little relationships and tiny designs in there and then you would normally look at this because a lot of people look at these finished designs from these artists and like wow oh, how do they how do they do that how do they know to like create like that layering effect and like the relationships the small medium large is off the charts how do they do that well now you guys know the secret right i'm telling you guys this today we're all drawing grannies people we're all drawing grannies so don't forget it <laughs> okay so now that i have completely boggled your mind let's go ahead and get into the time lapse because i will show you real time, how I actually went about doing this. And I'll pause it every now and then kind of describe what I'm doing, okay? And then I'll show you uh, real time how you can basically draw any shape and then flip it on itself to create a motif, to create a design. And then from there, you can either draw an entire character as I did here, or it can just serve as a symbol for shape language to design armor around. Um, and it's probably, I don't know if today's show is really gonna be super long, but that's okay because I'm gonna be taking some questions at the end Focusing a little bit more on questions today because you guys have been submitting amazing questions to the MZ, and we're gonna be focusing on that. Okay, 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 so let's go ahead and talk about this. <clears throat> okay, so as you can see right here, um, I want you guys to look specifically, so see how I'm drawing off of, basically this used to be the elbow of the granny, right? I'm like, oh, well that could be like a little shoulder pad, right, and there was like a little uh, shape here. It's like, oh, that's the thing that's holding the shoulder pad on. And I'm allowing my imagination to kind of fill in the gaps for me, right? I'm like, okay, well, here's where the legs will go. Uh, but then look at this. Check this out. This line that goes up the side, that's what eventually becomes, uh, let's see here. That line eventually becomes, you can actually see it right here. That line becomes like the little kind of like garter looking armor or whatever that goes up the leg and it looks really cool so that line was there 
and then we're kind of like adding on to it, right? Like all these lines that that appear throughout the armor, those are just kind of like thrown in there because originally it was just like this X design. I want you guys to pay close attention to this area right here, uh, which eventually becomes like the layered things that go around her neck and around the collar area. But can you see how right here, um, let me see if I can actually get away with doing this. Uh, let's see, where are we? Oh wait, I can. I can because I can just create a new layer and draw over top of this. Okay, so let me show you what I'm thinking about. So I'm looking at this. I'm like, oh, okay, right here I see a head. I see a head and I see eyes. Okay, right? Boom. Super easy. And then right here is like a neck. And then we have this piece right here. And I'm like, okay, well, let's kind of like follow that down, kind of complete that, and maybe like draw in some lines here. And then eventually what happens as we move on, that's what becomes this. See how I drew that in, drew the hair? And then when I flip that, here's what happens, is that I, I'm focusing on refining one side at a time. Notice how I'm not trying to mirror things over, right? I draw kind of like some, some general guidelines, but I know eventually I'm going to mirror that armor design on one side to the other side. Um, so then we're gonna get something like this. And I feel like when you do this, it really allows you to, now obviously this should not be used for every single one of your compositions because then all of your characters are just gonna look like mirrored versions of themselves. But rather, that's why we're focusing on design. Today is all about design. And this stuff works amazing for doing designs. Works amazing for designing armor and coming up with cool shapes because it allows you to work on one side and then you're like, hmm, let's flip it. Oh wow, look at all these cool new relationships that have formed from what we did. And then from that, you can begin refining. See, now I refine the right side, not worrying about the left. And then I flip it again, right? And then those things come together. Also widened her legs a little bit because we just like that, right? I like the idea, it's almost like this weird like samurai pop star armor. <laughs> it was like super crazy, very fantastical. But the point is, is that we have all these cool shapes in here. Right? All these cool relationships that really come from uh, developing one side, developing one side and flipping it. That's really what this is all about today, guys. Creating, starting with something, a weird drawing, something that makes no sense at all. It could literally be anything. Flipping it around and then trying to find something in there. Getting your brain jogging. Jogging with your mind, okay? So let's go ahead and continue. Re well, real time. Of course, this is me working real time for you. And you can see here. <laughs> So let's watch as I refine this stuff. So you can see how um, I'm just really like using the flow that's already there. And see, there I go. I'm just uh, flipping it, mirroring it right there, making some subtle changes. Now watch, I'm going to refine, I'm gonna begin refining the right side and then I will flip it again. I will flip it once more. Uh, but first I need to do the most important thing and that is refine the face. We gotta make sure that this girl is looking hot. Gotta make sure she's looking good. And yeah. We take some special time for that. So once that's done, then we can move on to the armor, okay? So and I know I know you guys are you guys know what I'm talking about. That's the it's important to have your characters looking good. Gotta have attractive looking characters. Okay? So um, I feel like it's actually really funny. I feel like once I refine the face or get the idea of the character down, I feel like it really just um, it's like motivating. It just like gets me excited to like finish the rest of the piece because I feel like I can see like the, the personality of the character and I feel like that just transcends and, and translates to everything else throughout the piece. Uh, even if it is something as silly as just like designing a crazy samurai fantasy armor, you know, type of thing. So um, yeah, so on that note, I don't want you guys to feel bad about going off on tangents because that's another secret that a lot of designers probably would never tell you is that Design, probably the best designs, they come from crazy tangents. Like you, you start with something, I mean, we already started with something crazy, right? Uh, grandma sweeping the floor. And then um, say you'll be drawing something and then you'll get another idea. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to move off onto that new tangent and just try to explore that for a little bit. That old sketch is gonna be there. That old layer is gonna be there. You can go back to it whenever you want. Don't worry about it. It's gonna, it's gonna be there waiting for you. So don't stress, okay? So yeah. Um, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. I'm very, very happy with how this turned out. Let's go ahead and start the Mocha B. Oh, if you're curious what Mocha is, this is actually the other character. You guys are familiar with Mika. This is another character named Mocha. So uh, you might be seeing some more appearances of her in the future. 
So I ended up moving out the arms because I didn't like how close they were. It looked kind of weird. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the end of the time lapse. So let's get back into some real time stuff. And I want to demonstrate how you at home can put this into practice. Okay, so you guys saw how we did that. So really the things that I want you guys to take away from, and let's start from the beginning. Let's start from the beginning. So let us make a new layer. Let's hide this timeline for now. Let's hide this granny for now. Sorry, granny, we don't need you. Okay, so this is how you guys are gonna begin working on your motifs. And this is a really good follow-up to uh, another tutorial from a couple weeks ago, which was called WTF is a Motif. And if you wanna go check that out, then click on this blank canvas that I've now drawn a smiley face on. Take you back a couple weeks, talk about motifs and their importance with like designing and just kind of getting an idea for where you're going. This is an add-on to that. And that is another cool way to create motifs. And that is by just coming up with shapes, right? Say you want to, I mean, we know all about the small, medium, large, okay? So let's create something like this. Let's kind of like throw something in like that in there. See, we already have, we have a large shape, right? Medium, and then this little space in between is our small shape, okay? So you have something like that. And then you can kind of like build off of that. You can just kind of allow your mind, but see how there's like a shape language in this. Like the shape language is this, right? It's like the sharp points followed by curves. Right, so something like that. You wanna have something like that on your brain as you're doing this. Or maybe you want your motif to be, let me make a new one. Maybe you want your motif to be something like a teardrop, right? So let's, let's start with like a teardrop and then build off of that. Now what else can we do? Hmm, maybe something like this, maybe something like that. And then just allow your mind to go a little bit crazy here, right? Just come up with some interesting kind of flowy shapes. Flowy shapes, very interesting. Ah, okay, cool. All right, so there we have a couple different ideas. A couple different ideas. Now let me show you guys the magic that happens once you flip, once you mirror and flip these things, okay? So here we have this shape that we've drawn, okay? So go ahead and hit Control J to duplicate this shape. Then you are going to hit Control T to transform it. Right click, right click inside, and then hit Flip Horizontal, okay? Now look at what you have here. Ah, isn't that awesome? Now we have a mirrored image. Oh, and the reason why this works, right? Gotta take a moment to talk about the psychology about this. Why this actually works is because when we see things that are symmetrical, they read as more human to us. They read as more, um, what's the word? It just, it's a, ple a pleasing design, a pleasing design. And so that we're using that to our advantage. We're not trying to draw a symmetrical shape, or rather, just drawing one shape then flipping it around and seeing the relationships that form from it. And notice as I move this back and forth, if you're curious about how I'm doing this, I'm grabbing it by, or I'm using this tool in the top left, right? And then uh, you're moving it back and forth, but make sure you hold shift while you do it too. Um, so like grab it and then hold shift. It'll make it, it'll force it to only move in a straight line, okay? So I'm moving it like this, and now look at that. Look, we have all kinds of cool, designs that appear depending on how I place it. Isn't that awesome? And then we could take this, right? Now obviously, I mean, we could make like a monster out of this. It looks almost like a praying mantis, like insect looking thing. We could use this as a design for a chest piece on the armor. Um, you could flip it around. You could be like this and you could do a whole different type of character. This could be the silhouette of like a giant protossy looking character. In fact, let's go ahead and expand upon that in just a moment. But before we do that, Let's go ahead and take this other shape and let's flip this one too, okay? Because I want to have a couple good examples. A couple good examples. I was so excited to show you guys this today because I know this is going to help you out. It's going to get your brain going. It's going to get you excited and you're going to see things inside of it. And it's going to, you know, it's just going to get you super pumped for designing your, your armor sets, okay? And just because you draw the shape like this, this is the next thing I wanted to say, is that just because you draw the shape doesn't mean you always have to mirror it perfectly like this, okay? Uh, you can also turn it. You can turn it like this. In fact, this is what I did with the grannies. So you can turn it like this. See how now we have different, we're having a, it's still symmetrical, but see how now the dividing line is going like, like a dis, right? The dividing line is now going like this, okay? As opposed to going straight up and down. So feel free as you duplicate these things uh, to flip them too, flip them around and then try to find something like a happy medium. Like 
right there. That's kind of cool. Something, I don't know, maybe like and flip it crazy like this. You know, all kinds of things. Oh yeah, and then look at that. That's actually a really cool one. I like that. So doing stuff like this is going to get your mind going and allow you to uh, start designing. Start designing because now you have a shape language. Now you have a motif, a design to begin creating a character with. And um, it, it really comes down to shape language, guys. Like say we were designing like some mecha thing. Obviously, like maybe this one isn't gonna work so well because the shape language is all like round and, and, and mecha stuff like robots are supposed to be more jagged and more like um, more mechanical looking. But I don't know, maybe you could make a mecha out of this. It, it's all up to you. Whereas with this, this is a much more almost like a, this looks like a medieval like shield. It looks very fantasy. It almost looks like the edge of a, looks like the edge of an ax, right? You could have like something like this and like the ax handle like comes out of here and then it goes down. See, look, you've, you've just designed a weapon, right? Super easy, right? <laughs> Super easy, okay? Or, oh shoot, I totally should have kept that on its own layer. Oh wait, I know how I can do that. Okay, hang on. Let's go back. Let's save the axe. Save the axe. Let's go back to that original thing because I did say that I wanted to make a Protoss looking dude for you. So let's go ahead and keep that there. Uh, let's flip this around. All right, can you guys see the Protoss in here? I'm gonna show you. And for those of you who don't, you should know what a Protoss is. Come on! You guys should know what a Protoss is. Okay, look, but it's like a freaking Archon. Okay, look, you just do this. You do one of these and see, now this is a good example of me adding lines in. I'm adding in lines to create a new idea. Now, uh, so watch how I do this. I'm gonna do this real time for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and just erase away, right? And I'm gonna kind of do one of these things. I'm gonna add a little line in there. See how I just kind of like separated that out into its own large, small, medium. See how I did that? I know when I reflect that, it's going to look good, okay? So I'm just kind of like throwing some lines in there where, and the reason why I added that line in, the most important part, is because prior to this, it was just a big open shape. It needs to be separated by something very, very small, I really believe. So that's another secret for you. Another secret where you got really big shapes, sometimes it just feels good to like throw something in there. Here's another good example, right? Like right here, maybe you put like a shape like that, a little line that divides this area, and that could represent something. It could mean something later, but right now, we are basically like free drawing. For those of you who have stuck around for long enough to see my episode on free drawing, oh man, so crazy. Like basically we're allowing our mind to just kind of run wild right now, okay? Running wild. So let's continue down. So let's see, where could this guy's arms be? Maybe uh, they're kind of sticking out like right here. Maybe we can add a shape in right here, right? And I'll put like, okay, so this is like his hands. Okay, sure, why not? Why not? And then right here, let's see, let's go ahead and bring this in. Let's bring that in, okay? And I'm throwing in some lines on the left side just to kind of get an idea of what this is gonna look like, okay? And not worrying too much about refining, okay? Remember, don't worry about refinement just yet. I'm gonna take away these uh, orbs at the bottom because I just don't feel like they add too much to it right now. Maybe they can be like, kind of like, um, Maybe they can be like, kind of like fall off, like energy fall off, kind of coming off of him like this. But I want to get the general look of this guy down really quick. The general idea of how this guy is going to look. Okay, now you guys are going to gaze in amazement as I turn this around. And you'll be like, whoa, that's actually a really cool design. Well, hopefully that's what you're going to say. I hope that's what you're going to say, but we'll see. Okay, cool. So then down here, I kind of want to bring this out a little bit more. Bring this out because Archons don't have any feet, but we know our shape language, right? It's lots of like curves and points. So we can easily just throw something like this in there. I'm going to go ahead and erase this line. Notice how I'm taking away lines as well. It's not all about adding lines. It's also about taking away lines. Start with something new. All right, cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, guys, the time has come to mirror it and be dazzled, okay? So be dazzled with me. 
You must be dazzled with me at this point, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete this entire side. Then we're gonna take this, we're gonna hit Control J, I'm gonna flip it around, and look at that, ladies and gentlemen. We are now creating a new design, isn't that awesome? And we did that in about five minutes. Now, isn't that awesome that you can just do that and then figure out whether or not that's going in the direction that you want, right? And and then you can just start something new if you like it. Or if you like this one, then you can continue with it. So um, that is my design theory in a nutshell. And if you do that, whoops. And if you do that, then you'll be able to take your grannies, you'll be able to flip your grannies, and then design some cool characters for yourself. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. That was a lot of fun. I actually really, really enjoyed that one. That was a very interesting daily. <laughs> I hope you guys got a lot of value out of that. I really feel that that is something that um, a lot of people don't teach, like how to properly get ideas, right? Because a lot of people will just like lay down, they'll just be like, oh, just start sketching, just start laying stuff down, right? And I think actually the original idea came from this, or like subliminally this idea came to me from one of my old coworkers, Larry, right? Who works at Riot Games. Uh, he used to work with a program called Sketchbook, I think, Sketchbook Pro. And it had an automatic mirroring thing in it. I think actually Photoshop has something like that too, but I, for some reason I like to do the thing where I work on one side and then flip it and then like get excited about what it looks like. But uh, in Sketchbook Pro it had an auto mirroring thing. So I'd see him just sitting there and he'd be drawing lines and, and then he was looking for those relationships. He was designing stuff. And it, Larry was such an amazing designer. And that is how, I'm not saying that's like the only trick that he used. I'm sure he's way more infinitely like amazing than that. But that's the one thing that I picked up on. I'm like, oh, I'm totally going to steal that. Stealing that, putting that over here, putting it in the toolbox. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very important thing that we need to do. And that is, of course, the question catapults. And I shan't mute myself. Love. All right, gentlemen, um, we got some very important questions. In fact, there are so many good ones on the MZ that I decided that I'm going to answer three of them today, okay? We're starting with Dispels coming in today, and he's asking, uh, Dispels asking, I admire your work and style, and I would love to have the opportunity to work with artists, yes, in the past. Oh yeah, and the question is, required level in order to apply for a job. Okay, really, really good question. Um, I heard you saying that we should apply for a job even if the company doesn't public isn't publicly seeking for artists at the given time. But for example, right slash art level in the past to two years has risen distinctively. So should someone be making something exactly on that same level in order to apply? Okay, so that is a great question to spell. And um, yeah, I, I can see how that would be very intimidating, right? Because when I first started, right. I got the job because Riot was nowhere near to making slashes of the quality and level that they were now. So at the time, do you see how like the timing is the most important thing? Um, so if you're, uh, and a good example of this is that my dream job was always Blizzard Entertainment, right? And I'm sure it's a lot of people's <laughs> dream job today and it actually is still mine. But uh, looking at their art, it's like, oh man, it's so good. But do you see how Riot at the time was still up and coming? Right? They were still up and coming, and I was right at that skill level and right at that entry level position where I could just get in there. Right, I was at that tipping point. So now Riot has now risen, and sure enough, there's more video game companies that are at that same level that Riot was that are looking for people of that skill level. And that's really what I'm trying to get across here is that don't always aim for the top company. Right? It's like Riot is now it makes like one of the most popular games in the world, but it didn't start like that. When I started working there, they were nowhere near that. So you gotta understand that, um, like, I'm not saying set your expectations realistically, it's like you gotta understand that there's always opportunity. Like that's what I'm trying to get at, is that yes, the opportunity has, has passed maybe for people at an entry level position to get into Riot doing artwork, yes. Uh, but who knows, there could be more positions there. And it's like, there's all this whole vague thing about like what's entry level, what's professional, what's really good, you know? It's like, but the point is that there's always companies on the rise. There's always companies rising. There's some that are falling, crashing down, exploding, right? And new ones coming up, new ones coming up. So keep an eye out for that stuff. Keep an eye out for the local companies. Um, a lot of things, uh, a lot of opportunities, I, I would say, you can find them at conventions, right? P places like TwitchCon. 
uh, you can find out about local companies like game companies that are getting started, mobile stuff, just anything to get your foot in the door and start building that portfolio because the most important thing that you can get is that dang experience. You wanna get experience and you wanna build your portfolio of doing stuff out in the field. All right, so fear not dispel, fear not dispel. Riot may not be right now, but it could be in the future, it could be in the future. Right now what you wanna do is you wanna find that proper opportunity. You wanna find that timing. All right, next question. Noxan is asking, Rusty with a smile, or unhappy, very sad face. So frowny, it's curling around the other side. He or she is asking, Dear Keenan, sometimes I happen to refrain from drawing creatively for days, just do little spheres and triangles, and we've learned how awesome that can actually be. So now, look, I just drew some teardrops and some crazy shapes, mirrored them, and then I got excited, right? Got excited about designing a whole new creature. Um, so, but anyway, too lazy to sit down and work hardcore, and then I end up too stressed about about how my skills have already dwindled significantly. I'd see, I, that's the part that I don't fully understand. How do you, how are you assessing that your skills are dwindling just because you haven't been working? I don't think that's necessarily the case. You have to stop for quite a while, I've found, to actually have your artwork like start to kind of, uh, what's the word, like deteriorate. So don't worry too much about that, Noxan. Um, yeah, and then here she follows up by saying, do my skills actually become worse if I don't exercise for as many as five days? Ridiculous as it might sound, is there a solid way I could work way back to the state from before my break without harming the quality of my art in the process? Okay, so this is a great question, Noxan. And I really believe that if you just really feel like taking a break, if you're not into it, then A, you need to figure out an exercise that can get you back into it, or you need to realize that, you know what, maybe art is just meant to be a hobby. Maybe art is just not really your thing. Maybe you're forcing yourself to try to be this thing when really it was always just meant to be a hobby. Good example is me and guitar, right? This is my little amp right here. I just do it for fun. Like I'm, I'm a total amateur at it, but I don't feel bad about that because it's just my hobby. Um, however, if art is meant to be your hobby, then you gotta figure out what is going to be your main thing, right? And if you really feel that art is going to be the thing that takes you to the professional field and the thing that you truly wanna do, then you really need to figure out how to make that work. Okay? And I think it'll just be natural, right? And that's what I want you to do. I want you to ask yourself that question. What is the natural thing? If you're not doing art and you're doing something else, well, what is that other thing that you're getting pulled toward, pulled towards, right? Ask yourself, like, what is pulling me away from this? Am I feeling just depressed? Am I feeling like bummed out? Or do I, you know? Usually it's something that is trying to pull your attention, right? It, people don't just stop doing things. Like, is it's in our blood to like want to progress and want to work on stuff. So I ask you to take a look and maybe what's pulling you in that other direction and figure out if that is your true calling in life. All right, last question. Coming in from saying create different people and different critiques. Feels bad to receive a positive and negative critique, right? People pulling you in different directions. The gist of this post is, hey, I did this, I did this piece that I really liked a lot. Um, someone said that I should put less color, but then the other person said, oh, there's too much color, right? It should, it should, like be so more, uh, wait, what's that? Why is the skin so dark? I saw on something similar, negative view. Okay, so basically one person's saying like add color, other person's taking away, and you have these conflicting critiques. Saying here's what I can best describe to you is that you should take those critiques and those opinions as just that. You need to understand that that stuff is just someone's opinion and you need to go with what you truly want because guess what? At the end of the day, when you finish that piece and you're looking at it, nobody else is really gonna care about it except for you, right? That piece was created for you, right? Or a client, right? But usually, like, this sounds really funny saying this, but if the client wants to work with you, they kind of already like you, right? So you don't, like, you're seeing your work through completely different eyes than your client is. Your client may may see something and they think it's the best thing ever. Yet you can look at it and be like, oh yeah, but the lighting on, on this part is it's not consistent. And like, oh man, the shadows, oh, I didn't take in, into account like the ambient occlusion and the, the lighting is like, oh, it's so bad, there's so many flaws. But somebody who's just looking at it be like, that looks cool, right? That's all they care about. So um, yeah, just don't take it too seriously, saying create. Uh, understand that it's like, it's your thing, it's your art, and you should do with it whatever the heck you want. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, with all that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and end today's show. Thank you guys so much for joining me on YouTube. Before we go, I'd like to say thank you to my amazing sponsors. Laura Bashir, David Chiariello, Megan Gwynn, and Marvin's, Mar 
have you. Marvin Sale! <laughs> Thank you guys so much for sponsoring the show. It would not be the same without you and, of course, my sponsors past. And the last thing that I will say is if you guys would like to get today's PSD, if you would like to examine the old ladies being flipped and turned into this sexy samurai fantasy girl, then just go ahead and click right here. It'll take you over to Patreon where you can download not only today's PSD, but all the other PSDs from the past. And you go and have a good time with that. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much. I will see you guys next week. And until then, you guys take care. See ya.